Accelerating technology has produced its own kind of waste. Almost a billion obsolete electronic devices are tossed out every year. Cell phones, computers, televisions, and monitors, all contributing to an epidemic some are calling e-waste. You know, across the world, landfills are being filled with electronic waste. Most of the toxic heavy metals found in landfills comes from discarded electronics. Our computers also leave behind more than six billion pounds of plastic, one and a half billion pounds of lead, and some 600,000 pounds of mercury. There are several toxins that are found in electronics, lead, mercury, bromated flame retardants, uh, chromium, beryllium. Nasty poisons that cause behavioral deficits in children, brain neuron degeneration, cognitive dysfunction, cancer, and pulmonary lesions, to name just a few. And what do we do with it? Most of it we simply ship to landfills overseas, causing havoc to the health of the world. E-waste is the fastest growing component of the municipal solid waste stream. We need to come up with ways to manage e-waste in the same way that we need to come up with ways to manage all wastes. Manage e-waste? Done. Better is all recyclable, okay? Right. This is not trash, and that's why I call it e-scrap and not e-waste, because e-scrap to me has value. Waste to me, I believe uh, the definition, if I may, is, is something that is non-recyclable. I'm Jim Glavin, and I process electronic scrap. Currently, this facility processes, on average, about four million pounds of electronics per month. These are cathode ray tubes, what are commonly known as CRTs. These are actually the picture tube that you look at when you're watching either your television or your monitor, if it's a CRT-based uh, piece of equipment. Uh, they actually contain lead uh, and have to be processed and handled in a very specific manner. We're literally dealing with thousands of different electronics. If you think of all the things in the world that have a circuit board on them, we process most of those here. From this facility, there are no electronics that go to landfill. Everything is recovered. With the help of one hardcore machine called the shredder. Now here, this is where the shredder is now reducing these monitors to approximately three inch pieces. And basically, well, the reason why we need to shred those is so we can create liberation. Similar to the MRF, like materials are separated from the parts they're attached to. Manually remove uh, the copper bearing streams, or we're using magnets to uh, remove the steel. Um, where we're using pulverizers and trommel screens that will, are act as sizing devices to screen out the leaded cullet in the glass. But the shredder can't handle everything. Some materials still require a little TLC. We can't just throw this into our shredding system shred all this stuff up because we still want to recover a lot of the value. And a lot of times recovering the value is, is sorting the equipment to maximize its value. Then from there, we would then take it to reclaim the precious metal at our refinery, okay? And then we would recover the gold, the silver, platinum, palladium, copper, and other elements. Thanks to Jim and company, no waste goes to a landfill, not even the packing materials. We are working very hard to create a world with zero waste recycling everything that we can. Jim is using technology to combat our addiction to technology.